There are many aspects of our health that are associated with fatigue. When we get sick with various acute infectious problems, we experience high fevers, we experience tachycardia, and we're tired. We want to go to bed. Our immune system is regulated by cytokines. Cytokines are hormone-like substances that the white cells produce to regulate each other's activities. A surplus of cytokines occurs whenever you're fighting a battle with an infectious agent. And those cytokines, as they increase, cause the flu-like syndrome. They cause headaches, fever, chills, sweats, joint aches, muscle pains, and fatigue. But fatigue also occurs almost universally in our hypertoxic patients. In fact, when I looked at the symptom audits, looking at inflammatory symptoms, we audited 58 different symptoms. And then when we found which ones were occurring more frequently, the most frequently reported symptom of all was excessive, overwhelming fatigue in our water damage building occupants who are sick. Fatigue is also reported in many of our hypertoxic patients who are sick because of exposures to pesticides or to solvents or to other toxins. So what's going on and why is this fatigue so prominent? What we have learned and talked about in the infant death case was that five out of six of the electron transport chain enzymes were below 50% of what they should have been. Which basically means that this infant who was suffering because of mold-related poisoning from a water-damaged building had poisoned her mitochondria. And because she poisoned the mitochondria, or the mitochondria were poisoned, the baby didn't do it, but the poison occurred, the baby had no energy. It couldn't use its muscles, its brain didn't work, its heart was compromised. As I have looked over one case history after another, it has become clear that a common feature in patients who suffer from chronic fatigue is that their mitochondria are poisoned. Poisoned mitochondria means a compromise to the organs of the body that depend on aerobic metabolism 100% of the time, the brain and the heart included. So, it was not unexpected that our water damage building exposed patients had brains that didn't work as well as they should, that their IQs had dropped an average of 17 points in one group of folks. 15 point drop in IQ is considered by Social Security to be total disability because you simply can't function in the way that you used to function and be effective. So chronic fatigue is about the loss of the cellular respiratory process. When cellular respiration or aerobic metabolism is compromised, the brain and the heart are gonna go next. And so too will many other organs in terms of being compromised because they simply don't have the ability to make the energy. I believe that chronic fatigue is primarily caused by hypertoxicity, and in particular, by the poisons associated with damp indoor environments and mold, and Joseph's Brewer's study of a chronic fatigue cohort in, you know, published in uh, April of 2013, demonstrated unequivocally 
that a randomly selected group of chronic fatigue patients in his clinic were found to have 50 to 100 times more mycotoxins in their urine and in their body fluids than would have been expected from air, water, or food stream sources. And that was true in 93% of his chronic fatigue patients who didn't come to him because they were in mold. They came to him because they were chronically fatigued. And he figured out that 93% of them had been exposed to mold at extreme and toxic levels. And they were really suffering from mycotoxicosis and the poisoning of their mitochondria.